Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing well. I am back, shifted into this side of the room. So if you have seen my previous two videos um, and you're wondering what happened to the background, and now we're back. So today's video is an updated review video of a handbag. It is this guy sitting right here. It is the Senrev Kavala Mini Satchel. And if you guys have been following me, I have updated you on Instagram stories that this has been on sale um, on the Senrev Handbag Revival event, which is now over, but they do run it, I think, about twice a year. So I always try to update you guys every time I see it, and um, it's the fastest to do it on Instagram stories than to make a video here. But today I did want to create a video on this bag, even though it has been on sale and it's probably sold out. Sometimes I do see it come back on future sales, so I nevertheless wanted to do an updated review video of this bag, um, also because I wanted to show you what the leather looks like. This is the Piccola leather, and I don't have this leather in my collection from Senrev until this bag, so I think it is important to kind of let you know of a new leather type, and in case other bags come in this leather, you'll know whether it's the right one for you. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Emily and I love handbags. I do handbag unboxings, reviews, comparisons. I also love travel, fashion, luxury. So if you like any or all of those things, consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell so that you'll be notified of my future videos. I usually do handbag updated reviews about three months after I've used the handbag so that I can give you a more in-depth and accurate review of the bag itself, whether I like it, you know, wear and tear, etc. So I unbox this Kavala mini satchel in December. So it's been about three, almost four months. Um, and I thought it was a good time to kind of update you on my thoughts. In this video, I will go over the details of the bag, the wear and tear, things that I could fit, my pros and cons, recommendations, and I'll list all the timestamps below so that you can skip around if you're only interested in one section of it. So like I said, this is the mini Kavala Satchel from Senrev. I have a lot of bags from Senrev, so I did want to talk about how this compares to other bags. If you are interested in this particular bag or this particular leather compared to another bag that I have in my Senrev collection, please leave it in the comments below. This one is a mini size, which means there is a larger size. So I will only be touching upon this one since I don't have the large size. And I just checked Neither of these are currently on the website. I think it might have been sold out, but like I said, it does pop up every so often. So I do want to give you an update because if you are interested in it and it does come up, it'll likely be on sale. This bag retails for about $495, although while it was on sale, it was like closer to three or even $200. So I would definitely keep an eye out on it for like sales and you know, things that pop up. And again, if you don't follow me on my Instagram at Clutch Shikariel, definitely do, because if I do see some of these things pop up, I'll probably put it in my stories with a link to it so that you can get um, shopping right away. I got this one in the black color. I don't usually have a lot of actually black colored bags from Senrev because their leathers are really good for um, not having color transfers. I cannot speak too much on color transfer for this bag because it is a black colored bag, but they do have other colors such as cobalt blue color, this saffron yellow color, and um, I believe there was an, like an oat color as well. So it does have a lot of color options if it's back in stock. So keep an eye out for it if you're interested. I do also want to point out that this is the black version, but it's black on black. So this hardware is actually not silver. It is like a more like iridescent black. I don't know if I can show you. See like the, even the, um, the metal is a little bit on the darker side. So yeah, I thought that was very interesting to me like that, you know, the hardware, I wasn't expecting this at all, um, but definitely check the hardware that comes with your particular colored Kavala because it varies. Some could be gold, some could be silver. While I have you up here, I also wanted to show this is the special feature of the Kavala satchel. It has this belt that goes all the way around and you can see that it loops like this. This is something that you can slip your hand into like so. It's also where it's holding um, sort of the flap. So this is the, here, let me show you. So if you do this, you open it, you lift up. This is what it looks like. This is on the inside. And you can also tuck it back in to, through the strap. Um, and then sometimes I don't even like close the loop because it's like secure like this. It won't fly out. But if you push further in, it will lock back into this magnetic snap closure right there. 
On the side, you do have these little loops as well. So you could hang any other strap you want on it. This bag does not come with an additional strap, but you can remove this uh, Kavala strap right here to wear it looped inside, which I'll show you in a little bit how that works. So I'm just gonna remove this belt right here for you. Um, it's like any other belt. You can actually adjust it so you can make it looser, you can make it tighter. Um, so like for example, if I made it looser, like I'll just make one, one looser. Um, you'll see that it does hang a lot looser now. So it's, I don't know why you would do this, but you can see, you can adjust it. Um, for the same reason, you can also wear it as a belt bag. So for example, if I took this off, um, you see how it's looped in the back to the front of the bag. Well, if I take it out and I do the reverse, so instead of looping it around the bag, I'm gonna loop it around myself. So I'm gonna loop it back here. And then now this buckle is out here. So if I were to wrap it around my waist like this, um, I have it on the shortest because I have a big sweater on. <laughs> but you can wrap it around your waist and then it can be a little belt bag like so. It, this may not work for everybody, um, especially if you're a little bit on the wider side. I'm more petite, so this does fit. And because I am on the last hole, um, I could see how it may not fit for a lot of people. Um, so that is, I just wanted to show you that is one way you can wear it. Another way that you can wear it is having removed this entire strap again, but looping it on the inside of this bag. The inside of this bag has two leather loops, and so you can um, slide this through here, it's, it's snug because I don't usually do this actually. <laughs> but I wanna show you that this is an option. So you just kind of run that through. By the way, um, here's another look at that um, black shaded hardware. So what happens is now you have this um, bag that is looped through there so it won't slide out. And you can adjust how you want, how short, how long you want this top strap to be. Now this is gonna end up being a shoulder strap as you can see, um, and you can adjust it so you can move, you can slide this strap through so that this little thing that hangs out comes back into here um, so that it doesn't flap all over the place. So let me just do that really quick to show you like so, and then now you can close the bag up with the magnetic snap, and then you have a shoulder bag. So this shoulder bag can now sit on your, your shoulder like this, or you can do a little handheld on the crook of your arm like this, and yeah, um, it is on the middle, so I can make it tighter, or I can make it looser. So if you have like a big sweater like me um, and you want it to like loosen it up or if you have a big coat on, you can certainly put it on the last one here and there we go. So now this is what it looks like and then you can wear a little bit looser so with a big sleeve like this, it would still fit um, very comfortably and you can easily get into the bag, close it and then there we go, I love this buckle. By the way, this buckle does have Senrev kind of etched in there. I don't know if you can see that. But otherwise, it's very simple. Um, there is a Senrev stamp right here at the front of the bag um, and then nothing else. It's very plain. And this actually will get covered if it's the original loop of the bag. So you don't, you don't even see the sun rev there. So if you want a low key bag, this is it. I'm also gonna tell you about the wear and tear while I have you up close. Um, as you can see, this leather is on the shinier side, but I have seen like some, um, I don't know if you can see the marks on that. Like it kind of, you, you can only see it if you like tilt it at an angle. And this is like, Let's see, it's a pebbled leather. This is a Pape Gala leather. It's one of their newer leathers. It's a tumbled, very supple leather. It reminds me very much of the Dulce leather. Um, but yeah, here's the back. You can see that there's not really much wear. There is a little bit of like an indentation here and that's from um, the, you know, where this loop strap sits and it's kind of like creating that crease, but it's it's not, it's, it's, it's always been like that. There's this big pocket back here, which I'll show you what fits there later. 
Um, the corners look great. There's not really much wear or tear. Um, yeah, the, the majority of the, if I have to say, is right here where I have to lift up this thing from under the belt. Um, it's not so much if you don't have a belt, you, you don't have to do that, but I've noticed that with the belt, I need to kind of dig under the belt and then lift up. And I think that's where this like scratching comes from. Um, but still, uh, I think you can't really tell um, unless like you angle it and look at the light and I can only really see it when it's like the lights hitting it a certain way but like if I just held it back here for example you can't really see but I did want to point out that if you are very like you know detailed about your bag you will be able to see it if you like look closely and angle it like that see then you can see where the the use point is right here but all around the rest of the bag I don't see anything not even on the corners so yeah um that is the wear and tear of this bag after three months of use and um i have used this in very harsh conditions i used it on my trip to mammoth so it was snowing it was blizzarding and i was wearing this so it was kind of wet because of the snow and yet i don't see any wear and tear this this material is supposed to be uh water resistant as well as like scratch resistant it is softer than say the uh, mimosa level. So this is the mimosa leather and you can see that this is more treated and pressed and it has like the striations going horizontally. This is the smooth leather right here um, and so it isn't as soft as the smooth leather um, but because it does have some pebbling. It's very small pebbles but it's very soft and like um, you know pliable whereas this 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 mimosa leather is definitely more rigid the similarity of the piccola leather is actually the dulce leather and you can see it's the same kind of like pebbled grain um i i actually think it's very similar um although i do think you can see more scratches on the piccola leather than the dulce but i think it could also be because this one is a lighter color so you don't see the scratches on it as much as this one this one definitely has more of a sheen this one does not really have as much of a sheen but i think it's hard to compare unless i compare it you know the same color i can tell you right now that this one does feel more supple and more pliable than the traditional mimosa or their pebbled leather. So now that we've gone through the wear and tear and also kind of around the bag, I want to tell you about the measurements. I usually do that first, but I guess I got carried away and wanted to tell you more about the look of the bag. Um, the measurements are rough because I measured it myself, but I think if I were to show you what fits in it next, you'll get a better idea anyway. So the length across this bag right here this way is 8.75 inches or 22 centimeters the height of this bag is 7 inches or 18 centimeters and the depth of this bag is about two and a half inches or six and a half centimeters the weight of this bag was empty but with this strap is about 490 grams or about one pound so the strap drop on the longest possible length looped into the inside of this bag is eight inches or about 20 centimeters. So I hope that's helpful. Um, but in a little bit later, I'll show you other ways I normally wear this bag. So what are the ways that you can wear this bag? I don't actually wear this bag with using this strap that came with the bag. I usually keep it here because I do like the look of this Kavala buckle at the front. It does make it more cumbersome to open the bag, but it doesn't bother me that much. So um, anyway, I like the look of it to kind of work with it. What I do use this bag with is um, usually with a crossbody strap. So I have one here. This is a chain, silver chain strap. Um, this one's actually by Next Fashion. Um, so if you want to know about their chains, uh, I've done a review video on it already and you can look there. I also have a discount code there. But Senrev also comes with straps as well. Many places have straps. So you can put any strap as long as it has like a little lobster clasp on it. And that's what um, I'm using here. So you can see that with this, I can wear, you know, on the shoulder like so and then also cross body like this and what I've done is just hooked it to the D rings on the side of the bag right there so then you can use it any way you want you can you know um, you don't even need these straps but you can if you get a shorter chain strap or you know um, it becomes a shoulder bag versus you know a cross body bag but that's up to you you can also get fancy with it and get like a more detailed thicker strap which I do have here let me just take these off 
So this is a strap from Senrev. It's one of their thicker statement jacquard strap, and it does have a bigger ring. So let me just hook it on here to show you. This one is similar to their previous ones that I do have, except um, they've listened to our recommendations and uh, actually made it adjustable. So that's awesome. So here I have it in the black um, material and it has this adjustable buckle so you can make it longer or shorter. Um, and then that's how I could wear it more casually. So with the chain strap, you can see it was definitely more dressy, but with this one, you can see that it's more casual. <laughs> Hi, Chester. Uh, it is more casual and it is definitely more comfortable to wear because the strap distributes the weight of the bag. Um, and because it's adjustable, it's great because you can easily, you know, in the middle of the day decide, hey, I actually want it cross body. Um, you can do that. So this is great. It also fits a lot of different heights as well. This is the newer one. The older one that I have is here. This one is also from Senrav. It, instead of having that, you know, buckle, it has this a little d-ring right here for you to hook other accessories but you can see how this one doesn't it's not adjustable for me it's fine because i think um if i just you know kind of superimposed it it's kind of the same length um that i would wear this one anyway but i just wanted to point out that if you got the newer option right here you are able to adjust the length and so it works for a lot more different um wear purposes. So I have, those are the straps I usually use with this bag. I don't actually ever remove this guy, but I just wanted to show you that when you buy it, it does only come with this. So there is an option to wear it. Of course you can wear it as a clutch because this is a very clutch sized, um, it's the mini size. Um, the larger one's a little bit more difficult to clutch, but hey, if you're, you know, if you're going to make it work, you can make it work. <laughs> so now I'm going to go into what fits in this bag. All right, so I have you here to show you what can fit inside the bag. Um, I took off all the chains because I thought it'd be easier to see, but inside the bag, you'll see that there is one big compartment with a zipper pocket in the back, and then also two slip pockets for cards up at the front. And on the back of the bag, there is a little pocket. Actually, it's not little, it's very big. Um, you can see that if I put my phone, this is the Pixel five um, across you can see that there is more space on either side for you to put more items in it or a bigger phone more like um, so you can stuff it all the way down like that and you can actually like it's actually really secure in there um, but if you don't want to do that you can also obviously stick it up like this and from the front of the bag you can't really see it so it is really nice that there is this uh, back pocket option with such a generous um, width so that's usually where my phone goes, but I'm going to show you what actually can fit into here. Um, I'll show you actually what cannot fit into there first, because I know some people will ask. A long wallet like this Emily wallet won't fit. I think like I tried, like if I like really try to wedge it in there, um, I think I've been able to get it in. It's very, very snug, but I don't think I would ever do that. It seems weird to do it you know, out in the public, like wedging it out like that. But technically you can fit, it's like very on the edge. Um, so I probably wouldn't do it myself, but I just wanted to demonstrate it for you. The other item that I was testing out is actually this iPad mini, which have fit in other bags, but not this one. So you can see it's like just barely, like it's like with the wallet, like if I like really tried and like stuffed it in there, um, it can fit. Um, I don't know, maybe over time this will be easier because if I do it often, maybe, but I don't know. I, it's just to me, it's too, too snug for me to try to do this, but I suppose if you want it to, you can. So um, another thing I usually show you is like a mini water bottle, eight ounce water bottle. And um, again, you can fit it in there um, like so, but it does kind of bulk up your, your bag a little bit. Let me see if I can close it here for you. Um, it, it does close. Okay. So it does close. Um, it's not too warped or anything, but it does feel a little odd. Like when I'm holding it, I could feel that there's like a bump in there in that location. So anyway, that is possible, but I probably wouldn't really do that. What I usually would put is something like this. So this is a mini pochette accessoire and I have a, my earphones, my uh, lippy, and then a compact in here. Um, this is one from Dior, but yeah, so this kind of fits like this in here. And if I closed it, um, you'll see that it fits really nicely down there. And uh, you can also wear it tall ways. So you can save up a lot more space on the side. 
I also have a pair of sunglasses from Louis Vuitton that I can pop, um, you know, standing up as well, like that. And then if you have a card wallet like this, this one's from Senrev, it's um, a zip one all around, which I really love. And you can also put that into here. So like that. There's actually quite some space in here. And um, so I could still slip more items in there. This is probably most of what, I probably put my keys in there as well. Um, but yeah, uh, this is kind of what I would normally put. But let's say you wanted to sit this one down. Um, you can rearrange it so that your two accessories are there and then your sunglasses are just sitting here and there's like a lot more space in this corner as well right here. So yeah, um, you can put like a hand sanitizer in there. You can put, I could definitely put my car keys in there. There's plenty of space. And if you closed it, you won't um, have too many problems. You can see that it, it's held in place. Yep. I think if you remove this belt, you can put even more stuff in it. But yeah, for the purposes of what I need, this is this is technically a small bag, so I don't I don't think I would do that. If you don't want to bring a card holder, because let's say you just want to slip cards in the front right here, you don't even need that, and you have a lot more lot 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 more space. So actually, if I put that water bottle back in here, um, like that, it it would probably work with this with this um, configuration. Oh, it's really puffy, but um, let's see. Yeah, it's really puffy, so you can see. If I release this belt, it probably would give it more space, but um, yeah, it is, is it locking into this? Yeah, there we go. Uh, so it, it does close, and you can see that it's very full, but it does fit the water bottle, yeah. So um, it does it does feel kind of on the heavier side, just warning, but you are able to fit uh, sunglasses, a water bottle. You could probably put like a card holder here too, but like a thin one and then a full mini pochette in here. So yeah, I hope that was helpful. So let's go through some of the pros and cons of this bag. I love that this bag is so a candy. It's, it fits kind of in your hand, but it can fit so much more than a mini bag. While it cannot fit a lot of larger items, it does fit everything I need and probably a little bit more. I love that it has the D-rings so that you can attach any strap, anything that you want onto it, or you can simply take everything off and be able to just hold it in your hand in a, like a clutch. I love the back pocket. It has a big enough space to fit any phone in it. And the inside is lined with a very durable and very nice um, micro suede material, which is very um, stain resistant. And yeah, uh, while I don't use the back zip pocket, I also really like that it's there for extra security measure. The cons I would think is the fact that this opening is a little bit more difficult to get in and out of. And so when you close it, you also have to, you know, kind of be more careful with it um, to slide back into to place. The belt is kind of the reason for why that is happening. So if you just removed it, it would, be fine. The other thing is also when I'm opening the bag like this, I notice that it does leave some scratching or imprints, not very noticeable um, to, you know, just someone walking by. But if you're more particular about your bags, um, you, you, you will see it if you like look closely and angle it at certain lights. So it is not as durable as other Senrev leathers that I've seen, but it is a bag that I would say if you like the feel of like a soft tumbled leather um, instead of the hard, more pressed um, leathers, this is still a good option. I think another con of this bag is that it doesn't really come with a strap. So unless you're willing to take off this strap here and wear it on the shoulder, you do have to have something in your closet or you have to buy an additional strap. I know sometimes Senrav does do gift with purchases. So sometimes you can get a chain strap or like a crossbody strap um, for free with your purchase. So that could be a good perk and that would um, kind of override this con. I love the special hardware on this particular bag. I wish they did come up with a little bit more options and colors, but so far I'm fine with this black one. I really do like it. I think it's um, kind of, you could dress it up depending on the chain that I use. So yeah, um, lots of pros and cons. I, I don't know if this is my favorite bag from Senrev, although it's still early, so I might 
fall in love with it more as the more I use it, so I'll keep you posted. So do I recommend this? Uh, yes, if you are looking for a size like this and you're looking for something that feels a little bit more supple than the usual Senrev leathers that you've been getting and you don't mind that it might show some scratches, this is a good one to go for. Um, it is very more unique. It's not the usual like Senrev look. I do like this, um, you know, different Kavala buckle here. So if you are interested in a slightly different Senrev look that is still durable and, you know, can hold a lot of your items, um, it is on sale sometimes. So I would definitely keep an eye out for the because with the sale price, it is amazing. I would definitely jump on it. And by the way, speaking of that, I do have a promo code it's $50 off your purchase of $300 or more so if you're interested in saving uh, and it works on sale items as well so if you if your sale item is over 300 you can get $50 off of that so I'll leave the link right here if you use the link it'll take you directly to the website and it'll automatically apply the $50 to your checkout of $300 or more so if you're interested in the comparison of this bag or this particular leather, which is the Picola leather, which will come in other styles um, in Senrev's lineup. Leave it in the comments below which one you want it to see compared with so that I can make that in a future video. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye.